How's everything going with you? Well, you know, we're working, baby. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you to know. Yeah, definitely. Um, let everyone know uh, your name and where you're from for people who don't know. It's easy over here. We're up in Chicago. It's CA for Chicago. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the socks hat on for a minute. Yeah. yeah. You know Chicago wild, honey. Yeah. Uh, let everyone know what's on your mind. Lit, um, I mean, for everybody that don't know me, uh, like I said, I'm from Chicago. It's easy over here. Uh, I just dropped an album called Baggage Claim. Got a joint with Stove God Cooks. Uh, it's called Roseanne Caviar. We just came off the tour with Conway. Um, man, um, I, mean, I got an album I'm working on right now, a new album I'm working on. So, um, what's it called? I don't know yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's still like, you know, it's still a skeleton, but it's the skeleton's so dope. It's crazy. I got Stove Guy Cooks, executive producing that. Oh, nice. You know, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Bro out here going crazy. You know, he all over West Side Gun. Yeah. New, new project, Hitler 8. Um, yeah. They working on something new. So, you know, we just making it work. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I saw before uh, you were working with Wiz Khalifa. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a, a track. That, man, that was when, before he was like Wiz Khalifa. Khalifa. But, uh, yeah, I dropped a mixtape in 2010. And I got him on a hook off of Tony Baines' beat. Um, yeah, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, I work with Wiz. I, I didn't, I work with, who else I work with? Um, God damn it. Uh, like, I didn't work with some of some crazy people like Danny Boy from Death Row. It's crazy. Dude, uh, who was it? You remember Danny Boy from Death Row? He was on the song with Tupac. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Huh. I'm mad that you got a song with him. Um, I think, oh, I got a joint with Rick Hyde. From oh, yeah, that one's that one's banging. Yeah, the big checks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. With uh, Two yeah. Official. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Shout out to Official. Shout out to, man. Shout out to. He's yeah. a hard-working dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that Rose and Caviar joint you did uh, with Stove Guy. That's pretty damn good. The beat's hard in that, yeah. too. Yeah, shout out Il Brown on the production. Like I say, the new um, project coming out is going to be executive produced by Stove. So he's going to have his hands all in that as far as the creative process with me. So, you know, I think that's like a first for him. Oh, nice. Did you do any uh, tracks with Conway yet? Nah, I haven't. Um, Not yet. I look forward to it. Con Conway is a, a animal. Oh yeah. So it's it's coming though. I, I I figure you know the features coming with everybody. It's just like you know I'm putting the groundwork in right now. Cool. Let everyone know out there. Um, what's some of your biggest songs from uh, sales and streaming? What's what's the names of them? Um, I would say the biggest joints. Um. The biggest joint I got right now is probably the joint with Stove, the Rose and the Caviar. Then um, it's between that and I got a joint called Zoning, because Zoning was on NBA 2K21 last year. So the streams for that was just crazy. Oh, uh, nice. That was like my first time seeing like, like some real rap checks. Oh, uh, nice. So between that and the Stove God joint. Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty cool. I'm about these grapes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, let everyone know uh, how it was, what it was like growing up or what it's like in Chicago. Man, um, are you on the I'm south Jones side Street. or where you at? Uh, right now I'm south. I grew up out west. I grew up in Cabrini Green. Oh, okay. Cabrini Green Projects. Um, building 1743-923. It was it was lit over there, you know what I mean? Cause my mother, she was a single mother. I had a I had a lot of uncles though, so they kind of like always put me up on the game and made sure I wasn't like soft or nothing like that. You know, kicking my ass when they just kicked my ass and shit like that. But um, it came to a point where the project was so crazy, it was just so much shit happening over there that we end up moving to Calumet City. 
that's like a suburb, like an outer suburb of Chicago. And um, I kind of spent my teenage years there. So mm-hmm. it was so crazy because that was supposed to be like moving out somewhere nice and then like right now it's lit. Like, you know, they, it's, it's crazy. Like my car got shot up last year on Sibley out and I'm talking about like 12 shots out of chopper right next to my car. Grace of God, I made it out. You know what I'm saying? It's one yeah. Of like, it, ain't, it ain't, you know, gangster story. It's like, I'm fucking made it out. I had it on me and everything, but, you know, it wasn't. Sometimes you just got to get out of there. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, Yeah, Lil Reese got hit like that in the neck and shit. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the difference between the two was like, I, and I don't know, the speculation, but. I think it was a hit. You know, it definitely was a hit with Reefy. Like with me, I think it was a mistaken identity. Cause uh, I wasn't yeah. even in my regular car. I wasn't in the flashy car. And then I was in a rental car. I was in like a little miles, a low key joint. Like, uh, you know, so it's like, what was the purpose? So I don't uh, know yeah. exactly what that was about. I got a little birdie, but you know, uh. whatever. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's, that's, that's where we grew up at. That's how, you know, that's how we was coming. Shout out my nigga Dub. Shout out everybody here in Cal City and Cal. You know, y'all know how we repping. Huh. Did it, did you uh I, I don't know where you were at in Chicago. Were you ever around any of those dudes like Reese or Vaughn or Dirk or G Herbo or any of those people or Lil Bibby? Uh, you know, they a little younger than me, so like uh, okay. I ain't, um I know the area they from and I know cats from that area, but as far as like them personally, they was too young for me to um I ain't hang with younger dudes. I always hung with the older cats. Uh, okay. You know, so like I didn't, I wasn't too much up on them like that, you know. But shout out to them too, though, because they're definitely holding the city down, like in their own way. I just try to bring something different because everybody, like, you know, you hit Chicago, you expect drill music. So I'm trying to bring that, 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 that G shit back. Yeah, no, I understand. I was just, I was just wondering. Yeah. Um, how old are you anyway? I'm 36. Oh, okay. Yeah, those dudes are probably like ten years younger than you or something. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How would you describe your music? Or people haven't heard it. More like the um, I because I got I had different sides. Like I got a trap side. I could do that. I could do that. Like my album Baggage Claim, it's full of like you know we got the heavy bass, you know the eight oh eight. And you know it's lit. You could play it in a club. You know when you want to get in that mood. And but this project I'm working on now, the stove. You know what I'm saying it's more of a Griselda feel. Um, I yeah. wouldn't say like just totally Griselda because I'm from Chicago, so it's definitely gonna have my drill. But like as far as like the production and like that gritty shit, like that's where I excel. Like that's my favorite type of music. So that's. That's, that's, I, I can go everywhere, but that's my favorite shit. Like they're spinning bars and like you know talking about this real reality, like street street shit, the street like uh, yeah. you know, feel like I'm validated to talk about it. Cool. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, um, what did your parents do when you were growing up, and uh, and what, what did they do? Uh, you know, I was raised in a single parent home with my mom, so uh, she worked at. What you were at Ameritech, <laughs> you know, it was Ameritech back then. Um, AT and T. So she was gone, like a lot. She would get off at probably like six, seven o'clock when she get home, and um, I'm probably be in the streets already. Uh, okay. So, you know, and she did everything she could do as a mother to make sure, yeah. like, she kept me out of certain situations. But you know, sometimes as kids or whatever, we don't. We're gonna do our thing regardless, no matter how good our parents is. Yeah, yeah. Huh. What was you doing allegedly growing up? <laughs> uh like on some street shit? Like, you know what lane was I in? Yeah, I don't say shooting if that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Like, uh, okay. I mean, that's for real. Like, All right. I'm not the shooter. I'm still not the shooter. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm Whatever happened gotta happen, but I ain't the one they call to do the shit, you know what I'm saying? So like um, nah, I wasn't the shooter or none of that. I was a hustler. I was the one. I wasn't breaking in no houses. I wasn't breaking in cars. Like, I always found some way to get my own money that didn't, like, harm anybody else or put nobody else in danger. Because, you know, shit. Yeah, I know I'm Chicago's sure. really crazy and shit. There's a lot of crime, a lot of shooting, a lot of shit going on. 
Yeah, it's it's lit right now. It's like and then the whole time it's like lit, but it's like over dumb shit though. <laughs> you sure to be tripping. Like back, you know, about ten years back, motherfuckers was doing it. I ain't gonna just say it was all real shit when it when when something went down, but like it was more purpose to when something happened. Mm. Like somebody getting killed, like they ain't going. They're not just shooting up everybody on the block. Like you're gonna get that person who did whatever they did to you. How was it uh, growing up and going to school and shit? Was there a lot of gangs around and shit? Cause, uh, yeah, I know people um, from Chicago. I say it's pretty crazy. Yeah, like like one day my grandmother worked at my grammar school, and we was we was leaving. But they had they had us wait because like it was a shootout going on across the field. Was, we went to bird school and Jenna was like across the field, and the gang from both school was having a shootout, like shooting out like they was a police or some shit. <laughs> and um, we had to like sneak out the school, so we hop in the principal car. Me, my grandmother, my sister, and the principal. We hop in the principal car, and then a bullet flew through the back window, like. Some, I don't even know where it went in the car, but I just remember that like back when I was young, you know what I'm saying? Like that that bullet could have went anywhere. Yeah, that that's pretty crazy, man. Huh. Uh, yeah, man, it's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of them stories. A lot of times at night, you can probably hear gunfire and shit, right? Because they say that shit's like a wreck. I don't stay in, in Chicago no more. So like, oh, you moved out. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't hear. Yeah, I'm sure it does though. Yeah, that shit's too crazy. <laughs> what are you on the outskirts of Chicago or some shit? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. You know, I'm here, but like, yeah. Keep my distance. <laughs> yeah, that's good. How was it going to school? Um, anything else you want to say? Did you graduate? Um, going to yeah, I graduated. Uh, school was the shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would ditch sometimes and be mad. Like, now I should have went to school. <laughs> You know what I'm like, yeah, college you're talking about? No, nah, like high school. Like I'm talking about, like if I ditched school, I then it would be mad because like I could have been talking to some girls or something. You know what I'm saying? I ditched to hang out with the homies and drink some beer or some dumb shit. Oh, okay. So school was school was a dope vibe. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, cool. Like, good relationships built, shit like that. Oh, huh. So so when did you decide to take music seriously? And wait, before that, like, before that, what was your first album you bought or CD? Well, the first one I purchased with my money was uh, Tupacalypse. One of them Tupac joints. I think it was Tupacalypse now. Oh, all right. Okay. I was young as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, Tupac, that was the first one I bought. And then I had stole, like, a Nas tape from my sister. She older. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I stole that one first, and then I bought the Tupac one after that. Like, right, yeah, I like the rap shit. And yeah, why? Since then, it was like, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Why did you? Uh, why did you think you can get into music? And like, what got you into it? Honestly, um, my family used to have family reunions and shit every year, and they would have like an annual rap battle. And I, when I was like. 10 I think I signed up or something like that and then I end up winning and it was my first time really trying rap I always loved it but it was like alright and it was in a competition type shit and I won and I came back the next year and I won and I came back the year after that and I won and I'm like oh you, you start getting that confidence it's like you shooting a jumper and you get hit like three in a row you're like oh, okay I'm yeah. wet let me keep going if I keep I ain't even learn how to do this yet but if I keep going this could be crazy yeah, I uh, I first heard you on uh, Two Officials' Rap Is Art uh, album with uh, Rick Hyde on that track. Yeah, that was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, I like your style, man. You're pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah definitely. Man, I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, you know, working with, like, cats like, you know, Stove and being around Griselda and all of that shit, like, you, you tend to, like, you can't, you can't slack. Like, you got to be on your shit. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? No matter... What you used to do, who you used to be around, like it's like that ain't this ain't that no more. This is the pros and, and them guys they work hard. Like, oh yeah, for they, sure. They stay in the studio, you know. Motherfuckers gotta stay in the studio, stay working on their craft, stay 
create new shit. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. Like Westside, he's like a genius, that bro. That boy, like <laughs> the shit he. Man, I can't even speak on it, but the shit they got coming up is gonna be so crazy because he creating a whole nother sound. He like a New York Kanye type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to even be around that is a blessing. You know, to, to learn and be able to absorb that shit, even if I ain't like right next to West, like Stove is. And you know, that's my dog. So he put me up on he put me up on game and like what's going down. So, um, It'd be like I'm learning the same experiences. I'm living through some of his experiences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm an open book. Well, not an open book, but I'm like a sponge when they come to somebody who I know they know what's up. Like I ain't got to question it. I'm all right. I'm, a, I'm this is where we going. Let's do it. You yeah. Know what I'm so I got bro back a hundred percent. And when I peep him doing certain things, you know, I I pick up off of that and inquire into the type of things that I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, growing up, anyway, what was your best memory growing up? <laughs> My best memory? Uh, I guess getting some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. What else is, what other feeling is still better than that? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Um, so, uh... So, how did it... I mean, you've been rapping for a while. I've seen it online. Like, 10 years or something? Yeah. Like yeah, on and like off, pretty much. Um, I took a hiatus when I had my daughter. I took like a, like a three, four year hiatus to just kind of, cause it was crazy, cause like you know, the whole scene had switched up. It went from, it went from fucking uh, like you know bars and shit like that, and um, you know making songs to, and CDs, CDs, mixtapes, things like that, to the Chief Keith era of the internet and you know like I feel like I had to relearn the game and just like reinvent myself so I would be able to last in this new this new um rap game yeah well let's get to the beginning how was it when you started out and did you first start working with Wiz or or who was some artist you first started oh, no, working with no no um like I haven't even met with I was just like a connection through the producer oh okay but, um I started out like, you know, I was listening to Twister, Do It Die, like, you know what I'm saying? Hometown Cats was what we had to look up to. So, you know, yeah. like, Twister used to be my favorite rapper. Like, I didn't think nobody could fuck with Twister, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't feel the same now or whatever, you know, but, um, like, I came up off that underground Chicago rap where they used to rap fast and again, and then, and then, and then, you know, I still like New York shit too. So it was like, and I like No Lemon Like I was just a fan of music I like Duck Mouth I like cats from everywhere If you could rap You could rap Like I like Daz The uh, Corrupt I mean I like Daz too But like Corrupt was crazy Um, You know I just grew up listening You know Tupac Like Big If it was dope It was dope Some cats would be like I like Big So I can't like Pop And it was like I had both CDs So um, you know, I like Pop more Yeah Yeah me too <laughs> Cool I had all the CDs. I had everybody's CD. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, so when you first started rapping, how did you get like who was the first biggest person you worked with? Like I know Wiz, but how did that all come together? You said a producer, but how did that all come together? Um, it's just the producer got him on a track. The producer already had the joint, and he was like very like selective on who he was gonna give it to or whatever. So. Oh, okay. Shout out Tony Bain. You know what I'm saying? I gotta call that guy. But uh yeah, like he put that together. He he made the play and um on Still Run This Town. It was mixtape shit, you know what I'm saying? We cause I didn't know what was going you know, I'm I'll just be working. I even I used to have talks with Nipsey before all that before he was like Nipsey like in two thousand eight, two thousand nine really? or something like that. What happened? Yeah, like I, I didn't stand on a feature. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was one thing I regret. We're going to talk about a regret. Like, I still got his big brother number in my phone and shit. You know what I'm saying? So what, how and did how did you end up talking to him? Like, what happened? It was a female I knew from Chicago. She moved to L.A. She got tapped in with them. And she was like, yo, what's this cat out here named Nipsey Hustle? Like, you know, he's building his buzz in. You know, he work 
talking this number out here. Y'all two probably need to link. You being from Chicago, him being from, you know, Compton and shit, or, you know, you know yeah. And like, if y'all come together, y'all could bounce off each other's fan base. And um, like, his shit was popping a little more than mine at the time. So, you know, I was gonna pay him for a feature. I just never followed through. And like, and then I seen him like go crazy. And I was like, damn, it might be too late now. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that was just one, it was, that was crazy. Uh, I work with, well, I ain't work with Currency, but I was supposed to do a show with Currency and I ended up missing show being late and shit. And everybody like, he was asking where was I at? Cause I was on the, you know, the, uh, the list of performers and shit. You know what I'm saying? And all my peoples was backstage, but I wasn't there. <laughs> hmm. Oh, who was next? Uh, what's that? Any other people, like, before you met up with, you know, Griselda and all them drum work? Um, I met a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? I met 2 Chains when, when he comes to Chicago and, like, uh, Indiana and shit Yeah, I mean, like, like work with or anything. Um, I didn't, I didn't work with him, but we was, like, pretty much a part of his entourage when he was Titty Boy. Hmm. It was, like, the transition right there from Titty Boy to 2 Chains, but even even just being around him, just being around him, you know what I'm saying? It's things that you pick up off of and, you know, you learn when you're around these people. And then I kept running into him. I still be running the chain, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Shout out to Chains. Stove got on his new album. Cool. Yeah, what what uh, what projects did you put out before Baggage Claim? Uh, I got did, a joint called Seven. Did you just have singles or you have albums or mixtapes? <laughs> Like I used to go under a whole other name. What um, was the name? It wasn't, it wasn't too far off, but it was uh, Easy O'Hare. I mean, not Easy. I mean, Be Easy. Oh, okay. I used to go by Be Easy. So like, and then it was just too many Easies coming out. It was G Easy and then these other Be Easies. I'm like, you know what? We ain't even finna play this game. I'm gonna just switch the whole drip. Huh, yeah. Some shit that they can't like nobody can say that they owe hair like you know what I'm mean? saying. Yeah, you yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying. It yeah. Really so much shit. Yeah. Why did you pick that name, or how'd you get that name? Oh, um, like I know O'Hare is the this, airport, but yeah. It's the airport, but that wasn't even like the reason. Reason I was watching. I don't know if you got kids, but I was watching the Lorax. Oh and, yeah. Um, yeah, and Dr. If you, Seuss. If you, yeah. Yeah, if you remember, the bad guy name was like O'Hare something. Oh, uh, okay. And he was like the villain. He was taking, he was cutting down all the trees so people had to pay him so they could breathe, so they could pay for the air. <laughs> and I like that. I was like, I like this dude. So that was the motivation behind it, but everything else around it made so much sense. Like, I'm always flying around, you know, busting moves. Um, I'm a fly dude, you know, we stay high. I don't wanna have to take off on nobody. Oh yeah. Shit like that. Definitely. <laughs> cool. Shit like that. Yeah, so um so how did uh how did you end up meeting hooking up with uh the Griselda dudes and or drum work and how did that all come together? Um I was with Griselda was through the homie stove. You know oh, okay. Saying? Like that's all, bro. He was a one hundred dude enough to bring me into his situation and what he had going on. How did you meet up with him? Um, actually through my producer Ill Brown. It was like manifestation. You know cool. what I'm saying? Cause like I was listening to Reasonable Drought, just like man. I, every morning I was waking up trapping like shit, shit it's crazy this yeah. dude is too ill and um I reached out on Instagram and bro like man what's popping I'm from Chicago I think me and your styles would like mesh well and he was like shoot something to the email so I hit my producer up hit ill up I'm like oh yo bro man Stove said you know throw him something like throw him like, like shoot him a track so I want to get up in there and record something so I can send it to him. He's like, oh, for sure. I got you. Come through the mall. I'm like, bet. Mind you, like, I'm from Chicago. So, like, um, I go to the studio. I see Ill Brown. I'm like, what up, bro? And it's a light-skinned dude standing there. And I'm like, yo, what up, bro? I'm easy. 
he looked at me crazy like, nigga, I'm stove. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> what? He's from <laughs> Syracuse, New York. And I guess he had like a session. In, I don't know, the shit was crazy. He had a session. Like He just so happened to have a session there that day. And I was like, you know, I told him the deal. I played him the song and shit. And he was like, that's crazy shit. And we discussed the business and we knocked it out the next day. And every time, like, bro would come to the city, you know what I'm saying? I, like, try to show my hospitality of being in my city and make sure we good. If you need something, I'm here for you. I got you. Um, you know, that turned into, like, just, that's my dog. And then that turned into, yo, I'm finna go on this tour. You want to slide with me? Is that how he did uh, Bros and Caviar? Yeah, that was how I made Rose and Caviar right, when cool. I first met him. Oh, right, cool. But now we got like countless joints on the way. Huh. Nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be crazy. It's, it's, it's going to get real dark. Nice. <laughs> how did your track come together with Ricky Hyde? They're too official? Yeah, too official. Um, It's crazy because too official a hustler. Don't get, don't get dark one second. Too official a hustler. Like, I don't know. When we came to Chicago on the tour. I got bro backstage, and um, when I got him backstage, I mean, my dog worked his number. Like, next thing I know, I was looking up on Instagram. He flying out to Buffalo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm like, I like this. Oh, shit. If I if I throw an alley you to you, like, dump that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so he slam dunked that thing. Yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. Um, what, what, who's your go-to producers? Um, two official, um, Uncle John. Uncle John, he's from Chicago, too. He just moved to Phoenix. Uh, he was with Def Jam. He created Stack of Stars. Stars, uh... Bag language, that's the clothing line he got. Like, Joe is a real, like, I want to say he's like the, who is he of Chicago? Like, he's just, he a hustling ass dude, you know what I'm saying? And he got a fire ass beat. He probably going to make, like, most of my next project. Cool. So, yeah, Doe is a killer. Doe, uh, too official. Proof on the track, DJ Proof. He's from Berlin, Germany. Um, he did a lot of shit for cats from Chicago. He got that. He did all baggage claim in that album I was talking about. Cool. Yeah, I was wondering, what advice did Stove God give to you? Uh, let me see. Like, I'm trying to think of something he told me just right off the rip. Just be patient, and you got to keep working and take advantage of all situations. Because, you know, he was on the Busta Rhymes for a long time. And had to wait for a lot of looks, you know, to get a lot of looks that he got. And he, he didn't even get a lot of, he, like, he finessed every situation that, you know, not even finessed, but took advantage of every situation that was put in front of him. And even some of the shit that he don't tell me, I can just look at and pick up on. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm paying attention to him. Like, yeah. he a real strategic guy. Like, he just, he don't just do nothing and it ain't got a point behind it like you know what I'm saying like Man. everything he do is like calculated and it's the reason he's doing it you know what I'm saying so I just pay attention to shit like that and it really helps it, it's got me so much further in my career just off like that alone not even what he's telling me just like picking up off the guy cool how was Ricky Hyde were you in the lab with him or did uh, two official just uh, send over get the track sent over um, he said he had it sent over, but oh, yeah. I mean, you could tell like that, like Rick did his research. Yeah, and you know he mentioned in Chicago. And, yeah, it and seemed like, like you guys that, were there you know? together. So I was asking. Right, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, and I ain't shout out Rick Hyde though. You know what I'm saying? That joint came out crazy. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, like you know, like he did his thing. Like I heard his flow was on there already, and I kind of just. Bounced off of his flow because I had liked it. I was like, "That's different. Like, it's simple, but it's different. I liked it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you talking crazy? That's the situation. FN a hundred shots. I got the titty shaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. 
I was gonna ask you what type of herb you like. Uh, well, of course, exotic, but um, I like the, I like more purplish shit, like purple with dense buds with a good taste. Cause I ain't gonna hold you like most shit get me high, but I want that shit that it get you high and it still got like it still looks beautiful. All right. Shit like that. Cool. Yeah. Um. Were you ever in the lab or talking with uh, Westside? I wasn't in the lab with him, but on tour, I chopped it up with West. Um, oh yeah. I think we was outside of. Yeah, did he come to Connecticut? No, he was in New York. Chopped it up for a little bit at the New York show. We came out of. Damn, I, I, either, either, I think it was Cali. I think it was LA. Huh. But yeah, you know, chopped cool. it up, got a little game from I try to, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, with that, even like, when I get around everybody, because I'm just, I'm kind of new to the whole circle. Yeah. So when I get around, I'm I'm not really trying to like do too much, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm there with Stove, and my main priority and the main goal is to make sure bro situation is situated before anything else. Yeah. So my loyalty like lies with him, and like I already know what type of guy he is. He's gonna make sure I'm good. Yeah. Like. Being around him, that's one thing I know for sure. Like, like he's a team player, bro. Bro gonna pass like he gonna put up fifty for sure. Yeah, I was wondering because it was a uh, Conway's tour, but West played a few, came out on a few dates. Yeah, West came out on a few dates. You know, <laughs> you know that had to happen. That's cool. Rock Martin came out. He came to L.A. Uh, Benny came to like Virginia. Oh yeah. Yeah, he came to Virginia, and then he came to a couple. I met Sean Kemp came to Seattle. Um, I actually got Baron Davis in the L.A. show. What were some of the best moments from the tour? Man, the best for me was New York. Because Chicago was like, I've done Chicago a million times, you know what I'm saying? But like New York, I had never performed in New York before, so... You testing your, you know, that's where you gauge where you, how you coming. What what songs of yours does the audience really like? I only did one song the whole tour. Uh, like, what song you do? Is like, it's the intro to Baggage Claim. Mm, oh. You know, I want, I want to get my sack. I want to post all day in the trap. I oh, want to okay. go OT, triple up off things, put all that bread in the stash. I just put two bucks on the dash. Off that walk, man, they almost crashed. I want to go get a bitch with a PPP that'll split that loan in half. <laughs> that <Like> shit. <laughs> Did anything crazy happen backstage or off the tour? On the bus or anything? Um, while we was on stage, the craziest shit I want to say happened was, oh yeah, that was crazy shit. <laughs> um, as soon as we get on stage, like, he was the Rolls Royce brake lights, and bro was doing that. And um, it's just like a big ass like space cleared in the middle of the floor, and it was a black dude and a white dude. And oh yeah, cause the white dude he was like the only white guy there, and he was like on some mosh pit shit, <laughs> and like uh, it was like a wild environment. Like they was not on no no mosh pit shit there, so like he jumped on on dude and homeboy just foul foul punched him twice, hit him in both eyes, and um, they was on the ground for a minute then. White dude got up like, yeah, and the, <laughs> the whole crowd was like, yeah, and performing. The, the show kept going. That was the first time I seen a fight happen, and then they break it up themselves and stood next to each other. Oh wow! Singing the words to old music. Huh. After they was fighting each other, dude had two black eyes. That's crazy. Huh. I was no, I, I was crazy. Conway. Um, Conway, like, Conway cool as fuck. That cool, cool. Like, um, we ain't talk too much because he ain't really know. You know, it probably got to be another setting or something like that. But, um, like, you know, bro, smooth. Like, he had good weed all tour. You got to do it so I will episode? I'm, I'm trying. Like, you cool. know, I, 
everything, everything in the works. That's how I feel. Like everything is in the works. I'm gonna work with everybody. Like I know that for sure. At the end of the day, I'm gonna have a song with everybody who is in the camp. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not Griselda. Like I'm not signed with with nobody. I'm not signed with Soul or Griselda, nothing like that. But I rock with some niggas real tough. And yeah, 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 cool. The, the music we make, it makes sense for us to tap in. Cool. Um, is your last project you got out now, Baggage Claim, your best so far? Yep. Oh yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> what's your favorite track on there? Uh my favorite track, man. Y'all listen to it. Go listen to Dog Ass. Dog Ass is crazy. Okay, why is that your favorite? Cause it's like it's the trapper music. It's that it's that shit that as soon as you go as soon as as soon as you hear it, like you you don't have to question me. Like when you hear that, you know how like like you like I don't know, you know, like this don't sound authentic. Like you hear that, you know I know everything. You know I'm tapped in. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Like and, and give you that feeling, and give you the goosebumps. Even if you ain't living that life, like I take you there. Yeah. That was my first like story kind. It ain't a story like song, but it's like a story. It's like a story, but it ain't a story. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing you into the world of what's going on. Oh yeah, cool. What's what's your second favorite track on there for people who are new to your music? I want to say um, it's between Baggage Claim and Play Catch. You no, know, Baggage Claim is self titled song and Play Catch. Baggage Claim because like the flow on that was crazy. Nobody ever rapped like that before. Like. I if, let me know if I'm bull. Let me know if I'm tripping. Like baggage thing, fucking Mike, go get the paddock thing, hundred shot thing, he ain't got a ain't little nigga, a lot of chains. Pulling up on a nigga, run it up on them bitches. Real life, your hoe. But you look tough in them pictures. You got words you the whole You got words you the whole bit. She was cruising on low, low. Better stay your ass in that crib. Little folks in them on that car. They got shots ain't from nobody. I just got back from the what, 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 what. Like, <laughs> the flow on that thing was crazy. Cool. Nice. Yeah, so, um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, well, I just wanted to give people a little introduction to you, you know, people that haven't heard of you, and uh, let everyone know what you got planned in the future, you know? Um, you know, it's lit. The future, we got the, the next album is dropping. I don't even know what to tell y'all or what it's called. Soul said, call it John Wayne. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a, I, I want to call it Flight Risk, so. Y'all be looking for the new music. I have music out there, a hundred features, you know, with motherfuckers. Like, it's not hard to find me easy over here. When you type it in, like, put a dollar sign for the S. And, um, man, you'll find everything easy over here, underscore for, like, all the, for the Instagram. You know, just easy. Go ahead, thing, if you want to find me. It's, it's really not hard. You know, I made it very simple for motherfuckers to catch up with me. Yeah, for someone out there who needs a feature, they could buy a feature off you. Yeah, it thinks it's still on, um, but I don't just do anything, you know. So like, yeah. it don't make sense. Like, if it don't sound right, I don't really care how much money you got. We getting money. I don't, I don't really need to do the future, but like, if it makes sense, the money right, we doing that. We working, baby. We all gonna build off each other. You know what I'm saying? It's all for sure. opportunity. You know, throwing that oop because somebody did it for me. You know, I'm gonna definitely do it for the next person who's serious and really trying to make shit happen. For sure, man. Um, and uh, what's up with the merch you got? I, I saw some of it on uh, on your IG. Let everyone know. Definitely. Um, that's the flight crew shit. You know what I'm saying? That's my, my new line. I just dropped it last week. I was working on it for about a year now. I finally got like, I really like, was, was checking out fabrics and shit and like, you know, designing different, a whole lot of different designs and coming up with uh with the, with the mascots and shit like that. So we finally got all the way done. It's dope as fuck. Like I'm, I promise you, I'm was walking to get some breakfast this morning, and I ain't even have it on. Motherfucker, my man stopped me. Like, yo, hey, hey, hey I need that flight crew shit, bro. What, what's to that? Two X. And it's just like, damn, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. but I got drip. So like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, like, fuck with it. Go on my page, holler at me. I'll get you our melody, whatever we gotta do. I got you. Flight crew is, is the new dope shit. It, it's, it's hard. That's my man, dope nerd, right here. Like I be rocking original, like like 
local entrepreneurship is dope though cool yeah it looked pretty good um definitely everyone go listen to uh i recommend roseanne caviar and uh yeah. the other one with two official big checks is banging and uh, his new album definitely. too definitely yeah for sure um definitely uh you mind giving me a shout out tmnyc tmnyc Hey, shout out my bro, TMNYC. We in the building. We lit. I don't know what y'all doing. If you're not here, you ain't nowhere. So get there, you hear me? <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. And, uh, yeah, it was good talking to you. And uh, definitely hit me up when you got another project coming out or uh, something in the works. We, um, I'll have yeah, you back on. Either, either when we, like, this, this Griselda Wu-Tang tour finna pop off in March, I believe. And, um. Uh, the album I need it done before then so I'm gonna tap in and I'm gonna keep you posted bro you'll know first oh yeah for sure Um, I didn't know Griselda's doing a tour with Wu-Tang no nobody know uh, okay <laughs> 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 oh, okay okay <laughs> sounds <Understand> good <laughs> sounds good <laughs> alright my dog you heard it alright cool <laughs> one okay. alright cool brother all right, stay blessed, man. I wish you the best. Man, I appreciate you. Yeah, man. we'll talk. Here. Thanks, man. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>